get right into it. Um, what we've done since last time is we create, like, we, uh, we load up the game. Um, now it's interesting that it takes this long to sort of, like, start displaying. What's also interesting is that it takes that long, like, this, the same length of time, essentially, on the, um, what is it called? Uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So, to me, that's telling me it's, it's, like, it's something else. It's not just raw processing power or the GPU. There's something else going on there that's causing that to take a little bit longer. Um... And I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's something blocking that you is sleeping for some reason. Or maybe it's like having to draw this entire grid out. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. If I remove the grid, I'm actually curious. What um what would happen? So in our draw, let's um not draw this grid and rerun this. No, so we still get the same sort of action where you get this white box as it's creating the context and it takes a little bit of time and it starts running the game and we see the updates running. We see everything else running and uh, that's why the ball is down here when it started up there at the beginning. So I'm not exactly sure what's that's going on. The we do know that if we if we start with like a starting soon page and then we move over to that, it's probably going to um, it, it's going to make that a lot like you know, less noticeable, if that makes sense. That being said, today what I want to do is create a, create a, some kind of platform. So what would that end up looking like? Let's actually go down to drawables and create a platform for ourselves. Let's do this as just like a platform, like a standard platform. Um, I think like we could just we could do this as a mesh. We could make this like just a nice little green or, or something. Um, actually, we could make this a, a blank template uh, platform that then the drawable um, the draw system actually knows what color to make it. To overwrite it. OK, so. Let's. So we have our drawables. Let's go ahead and have a function we'll create platform. Uh, let's see. We do need to take in the world so we can get the, the standard unit width and height because I'm going to make this that, you know, standard world width and world height. So we do need the world. Uh, we do need the context. Not sure we need anything else for this. Because it's going to be translated into place in the draw system. Ah, oh, that's my T ready. Okay, so. Uh, the color for this one, I think we're just going to make white and we can allow, uh, that a white color allows us to override. I believe that's how it works. Um, otherwise we would need to set it black and maybe override that way. I can't remember if it's additive or it just overrides. Um, we'll find out. And I don't need to do any of this crazy stuff that we're doing up here. We just need to create uh, create this. So we're going to say our uh, mesh equals. So it's going to be our mesh builder. We can probably even just do this and return to mesh builder. Uh, we can make a rectangle here. So we're going to have draw mode fill. For our bounds, we're going to do a rect new. Do we have a rect? No, we do not. Um, okay, so then it's going to be x, uh, the x position, the y position, and 
Um, and like where where to place this. I want the positioning of everything is going to be in the center of it. So I want to if I want the X um, to be zero in the location that I just want to easily position this over. Uh, we're going to have to take that into account for this this platform. So we need the width of it. Let's actually create that up here. Let width equals world dot uh, unit width All right, so we get our width and our height, then an erect for the X. I want to take uh, basically I need to start this at zero point like that's going to be the center and then subtract from half the width. So it's really just going to be minus. Um, and then it doesn't really matter. I can put the negative here. Uh, do width divided by two and then for the the y it's gonna be negative height divided by two because if if one of these is negative then the entire thing is negative then we have the width and the height and then color let's just make this a nice white And then we'll build and the context and there we go we have a we have our create platform that's returned in the game result so we can call this now and now we have that saved away so we can now make a, a, a draw system for this static platform. Um, Apostolik. Hello, good morning. Well, morning for me. It, morning, afternoon, evening, wh wh wherever you are. Good, whatever that do. Good morning for you too. Awesome. All right. So, um, platform draw system. Let's. Um, how do we want to do this? If we take a look at our player draw system, which is like decently similar to this, uh, we notice that it's basically just our, our draw system here. Um, we are probably going to want a color override for ourselves. Let's do a pub struct. Uh, let's see, this can be the platform draw system. So we're going to want like a color override. You're going to be type color. You're going to type. Oh, uh, none of this stuff will work until I mod it. That's why. There, let's try this again. Really? You can't find color still? No. All right, so you're going to be a color, which means that we need to um, we need to have a new to create this as a color. So we're going to take in a color, and that will be a color. Come on. Best analyzer. It's auto import thing sometimes works. 
not always. All right. There you are. Okay, so we bring in a color. I'm not sure if we need anything else for this right now. Well, we're gonna know to, to reach in and grab the platform, um, and we're gonna so we're gonna return a uh, self. So we're gonna have just a self with a color in it. Okay, that's uh, easy enough for this. We're also gonna want to implement or uh, derive debug for this because our uh, trait derives debug. GGEasy is the framework you use to make your game. Yes, I have, I am using GGEasy, and then this is sort of like a template uh, on top of GGEasy. So it's not like a framework on top of a framework. Um, I haven't yet like turned it into any library stuff that does these things, which that might be interesting though. Yeah, it is. It is cool. GGEasy reminds me a lot of um, Love 2D, uh, if you're familiar with Lua and their game engines. And then um, also a little tiny bit of processing, but that's mostly because uh, Love 2D itself was based upon processing way back in the day before they completely broke off. And like, cause they, they um, were basing all of their APIs on, on processing. And then it's like, well, let's actually just be our own thing. And they, they sort of did their own thing at that point in time. You're still in the C-sharp world using mono game. Interesting. So you're in C sharp and you're using mono game instead of uh, uh, most people in C sharp use Unity. I suppose there's uh, also um, a Godot. Godot supports C sharp too, right? Unity, that's fake C sharp. Yeah, it's still C sharp under the hood, right? I've not used Unity, so I don't actually know. Um, all right, so. Back to our platform draw system. We have this. It's really outdated C Sharp. Oh, do they force you to use old versions of C Sharp? That kind of sucks. All right, so we have our platform. We have this new here. So if I want to, oh, well, if I want to actually use it, we also need to um, implement draw system. Here we go. Thank you for grabbing this for platform draw system. Uh, all right, so we're taking this draw in and we're gonna get a location for where this is gonna be because we already sort of set that. It should be pretty simple for us to um, just draw this out. Model game is nice since it's open source, nice. Is it a graphical system too? Like, do you get to actually see what you're doing? Or is it like this where everything, 100% of what you do is just programming and then you run it and see if it works? Peer code, nice. Um, although, to be honest, like every once in a while I look at systems like Godot, Godot and Unity, I'm like, ooh, I wonder I wonder if like those tools would like how much they would help or how much they would just have to learn them and they would just get in a way until then. Um, I've never used any graphical uh, programming language or programming system like that. So, um, okay, so how do I want to do this? We want to translate it into proper position. And then we want to set what the color is. So we're gonna, um, we have our drawables. So we're probably gonna do draw, hand it the context for the drawable. It's a reference to the drawables.platform. And then for the params, Uh, draw param new. Then we're gonna give it a new destination of uh, location at x location dot y. And then we're also gonna give it a color of self dot color. And that's it. We're gonna return the result of this draw. 
which is going to be this uh, game result. And we don't really care about this. Um, well, we don't really care about this lag. And we don't really care about the physics system. Because um, unless like we decide that we're the ones, like this is in charge of, uh, well, no, because it's draw, draw. So I don't have to care about any of this. I personally feel working in code makes more sense. Yeah, it's like I work in code so much, but like there are some times where I think like there's probably lessons to be learned in there that like I might be able to bring back or or something else. For example, creating level levels. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to create a level editor here. Whereas if I was using something like Unity or Godot, I might be able to just use their graphical system to sort of drag things around and then output the JSON file that way. But maybe creating my own level editor would have been better to begin with. I don't know. All right. So if, if I do this, we still have no errors. So um, if you want an editor, you have access to other tools like Tiled. I've never used Tiled. Um, then your imp engine can import their JSON. Ooh, that might be interesting for me to, to look into for, for this. Uh, we're getting close to needing, needing a, uh, some kind of, um, map builder for, for it, but we're not there yet. Okay. So we have a draw system for this out. So I think this means that we can actually create our... Uh, in the main library, in new here, we should now be able to create a platform and add that in. So let's do that. Now, of course, we're only creating one platform, and it's not that great, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it ends up looking. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, set the location. Let's uh let's just set this at like so we're at 5050 if I do um 50.0 uh x and then I go down by like 150.0 maybe even like 350 to give that time for the falling then set the draw system it's going to be a box new Okay, so we have, um, this is going to have to be the platform draw system. New. Um, and then we have to give it a color. So give it a color. New. And let's just create something. Let's make this um, like a nice green, maybe. Like 1.0, maybe like 0.1, 0 0.1. I'm not actually exactly sure what color that's going to make it. That's probably not going to make it green anymore. Okay, what else do I care about here? Okay, so set affected by gravity. I think this is false by default. So I want to not hit that. Um, and then we don't need a physics system, so we don't need any of those. Like we're, we're just good to go. So we can do that. We have our platform and then we can add that in. So world dot add entity platform. That's going to add it into our grid and it's going to automatically start, um, running draws on it. If it's, if it's inside of the, the camera, which it should be. Um, okay, so if I do that. Let's run this and see what we got. Okay, so there's our there is our um, our platform. I could drop this down a little bit lower, and we'll give it more time for the 
the ball to sort of like land on it because we do have that fun whatever that is that's that's delaying us but that's pretty simple we just say our y is like 750 Oh, that's maybe a little bit too far down. Um, let's do 650. I think that's going to be uh, within the X. I, I think it were like seven something for for the height on this this window. There you go. OK, so it's not affected by gravity. So that's why it's not falling. And if I want to have it collidable, I need to set, like, to set that. So that way our ball can then land on it. Okay, so what does that mean to me? It means in our... Like, I, I don't think we need to have a physics system for it to tell it that it's collidable. The player physics system is going to handle that. But for our entity, we should be able to say that you're collidable and this should be a pool and in default so we can have this be false by default and uh, then we want to add a test in here Uh, this is going to be, see, a test um, set entity as lightable. All right, so let boot entity equals entity default. So that should be false for, for collidable. So assert um, should be able to do assert equal, and it's going to be entity dot. Collidable is false. Then uh, entity equals entity dot set collidable. Um, and this we're going to say you're true. Insert equal now is going to be entity dot uh, collidable. It should now be true. So running, running this test obviously fails because that method doesn't exist yet. Let's go add in a set collidable. Okay, that should make it. Um, your eventual goal is to release a game framework. Not really. Uh, my eventual goal is to make a bunch of games, and I'm using this as uh, it's going to be a template for me to create some like platform games. That that's the eventual goal, and I'm also using it to learn game dev patterns, and then also like to increase my just general programming um, skills, because I have noticed that like. Uh, Doing this type of thing is it's different enough from um, web dev, which I do during the day, that uh, I can actually get like get better at a lot of different things. That's the other goal is like, yeah, it could save me a bunch of time, even if I don't end up making any like full games, which I do want to. But if I don't make any full full games, I'm hoping that the lessons that I learned from this are going to be worthwhile. So. Hopefully there's like multiple benefits that I get from this. Okay, so we can now set this as collidable. So we can come back to the main library. And so here's our platform. Um, we can then add in you and do set collidable as true. 
That's what you did. Um, you set up some templates and you released some libraries with code you kept. I kept writing. Oh, nice. All right, so we have a collidable platform. So if I want to collide on this, then in my physics system for the player, every tick that this updates, I'm gonna need to get a list of all the other entities that, all these other entities that are collidable so that I can check if I'm colliding with them. So we have to, we have to do that now. So we're going to have to have a, a list of, now this is going to yell at me quite a bit because, um, it's not part of the trait. So maybe let's make it part of the trait first. So an update here. We have our location. Um, I also want to add in collidables. And that's going to be a reference. Um, we should probably just make this a full uh, a vector. But that's going to hold a reference to entity. Now, will that will that work for us? I I want to say that it would work for us. If this does not, we're going to have to clone the entities and then we can give ownership of it. I'm going to see if I can avoid that, but we'll, we'll see. All right, so add you in here. Entity needs to be imported so that you're aware of what this is. And then here in update, we can now check to see if we are colliding with one of these other entities. And if we are, let's just for right now, like just stop our, our movement. So like we can just check to see if we're colliding down. So how would that look? We, this would happen after we update our location and do all this stuff, we could then check our collisions. So what does that, what does that look like for us? Uh, we're gonna say if um, location, now location is a rectangle which has an X, Y, but also the height and the width, all sort of like inside of that. So if location dot X, and this is the center of it, so it has to be half the height down. So plus, um, half the height, so that's going to be location dot height divided by 2.0. Okay, that's our feet. If our feet are greater than the, well, the collidables, so that means we have to loop through all the collidables. Okay, so do collidables dot, let's turn it to an iterator. And then for each this, okay. um, basically it's an other. And then we can run this test. Okay, so if our location at x plus our location dot um, half the height, if that's greater than other dot uh, location dot x. So I guess that's that's the thing is like I can't check to see if just like the one pixel is aligned. I have to check if the left side of us is so it's like standard bounding box, um, but only for the X's really. Well, I guess the Y too. If the right hand side of us needs to be to the right of the left hand side of this other. So let's do this. Let's do this proper. If Come on, there we go. 
Um, if the right hand side of us, so that's going to be our location dot y. Um, well, uh, no x plus location dot width divided by two point zero. Okay, so that's the right hand side of us. If that is greater than the left hand side of the other, so other dot location dot x minus other dot width dot location dot w divided by two point zero. Okay, that is if our right hand side. Our right side is to the right of the other's left. Um, we also have to check to see if R, so then, and. Why are you yelling at it? Okay, you weren't really yelling at this. And um, our location dot X. So now we have to check to see if our left side needs to be to the left of the other's right side. Okay, so x minus location dot w divided by 2.0. So since I need this, let's calculate that up here. So let, um, so our width equal to, uh, I guess it's gonna be half width, right? Width equal to location dot double w divided by 2.0. Then we can now take u and do half width, and you are half width. Now we know we're going to need the other one, so let's create that too. So other half width equal to other dot location dot w. 2.0 then you become other half width okay so that's our first one right if location of that okay so if our um, if our right hand side is to the right of their left side and if our right if our left side has to be to the left of the other uh, dot location dot x plus um, other half width. So the right hand side. Now that's not really everything. We also have to check to see if our feet are are clipping into it. So if the bottom of us, so we're gonna have to have um, that half height. Okay. If our feet, so the bottom of us, so that's location dot y plus uh, half height. If that is greater than other dot location dot y minus other half height. Now, I, I'm not going to check like the below us right now. I'm just going to check to see if this is if this is true. OK, so if if this is true, then what I want to do is reset our location. Um, but maybe maybe just for testing purposes, let's just kill our. Um,
Now we probably want to um, kill our, our velocity, don't we? We want to say self.velocity times equals 0, .0 to to stop that. Uh, we also want to reset our location. So location dot y, the x can stay the same. So we need to reset this to be the other's location. So other dot location dot y. Um, and then we want to subtract the other half height minus also the half height. So if I do that, we should stop and just be on top of this platform. Um, okay, so I have some errors here. You need to pull you in. An entity. Right, it's now expecting two arguments because we now need to pass in um, all of the other collidables. Um, and I, we need to be, be careful here because if I pass in the player as an entity as well, then that's a that's a problem. Currently, the player is not collidable, but and I guess I could uh, we can start by getting that, but it's not really going to be that helpful. Let's let's start by just filtering through it, and I guess it'll be a filter, right? So collidables equals we do self dot. Oh, and this is entity. So we actually need to pull in the uh, collidables, basically the other um, their entities. Let's actually call this collidable others is going to be a vec uh, with a reference to entity. And then down here, we're going to pass it in. That makes you happy, but now we have to add this in to the world. So the world now needs to have Tell the entity, okay, we need to get all of the others of you. And that's a problem, right? Because I'm not going to be able to get... I'm looping through all of these entities. How can I possibly... Like, it's not going to let me borrow this twice. Especially when I'm borrowing them mutably. So I am going to have to clone them. So that's a limitation that we have. Let's let's go back in to into you. We're going to just take ownership of this. We're going to have ownership of these entities because they're not going to be the real entities. So you're all happy into here. So now we need to get a list of all the entities that we can collide with. Uh, in a way, we have this right here. We have these entities as a vec of a reference to entities. I kind of need to clone this now. But then we can be a light clone. So if I do let um, collidable entities. Can I do something like entities dot iter? Um, I want I don't want like a, let's see. I can do a map. That's not necessarily super helpful for me. 
see. There is... There's Fold. Fold might be good. Producing a single final value. So I want to... Um, our initial... Okay, so what we're going to start with... We're going to start with a Vec. Like that. And then we're going to have our function, which takes in an entity. And then we're going to do step with it. And we have to return um, a Vec of, of something. And we know that we want to take these collidable entities and we want to pass them in here. So this entire idea where I'm doing it here, that's not what I want. I want to move you into the correct function. Was expected to take two arguments, but it takes one argument. Um, okay, so what? So self, so in it, and the function, and then what does the function take? Oh, the accumulator. Okay, so the accumulator and the entity. So this is going to be our like whatever this vector is. Um, so this is gonna be the collidables. And this is like the current entity. So what I wanna do here is I want to take our entity and I want to check to see if it's collidable, if it is, clone it and put it into collidables. So what is that going to look like here? We're going to say um, if entity dot. Um, so I can't actually check this unless our entity. Lightable needs to be public. OK, so if entity.collidable. So if this is true, then I want to clone that and stuff it into collidables. So we're going to say collidables.push entity. Dot, and then I want to just clone it. And then at the bottom here, we're going to return collidables, which becomes this here. Now, you should be yelling bloody murder at me. Okay, so expected struct um, a vector of entity found a vector of a reference, a double reference to entity. So I don't want that. Now, can I just dereference this twice? Yes. Cannot move out of a shared reference. Move occurs because value has type entity, which does not implement the copy trait. Now I am trying to clone it. So maybe we can do this in a two steps. So let, um, Entity clone equals entity dot clone. And we'll give ownership of that out. Now, entity doesn't implement clone at all. So I'm actually kind of surprised that it's yelling at me here and not not here. 
But let's go ahead and try double dereferencing it here. And I want to move it out because we're getting a new one, right? We're getting a new one every single time. Let's implement clone and then maybe maybe that'll be happier. So for entity, I want to implement clone for entity. Um, this is pretty simple when we're implementing our own cloning function for this. Basically, it's like, what are we going to return? We're going to return a self. And, and that's kind of it. And if we take a look at what um, what we need to return here. It's uh, these things. Can I do something like self? Okay, fill struct fields. That works. All right, so for the location, we want to put in self.location. That I believe has copy on it, so that'll be fine. Um, draw system. I actually want you to be a nun. Uh, so you should be an option. Affected by gravity is um, whatever yours is. So self dot by gravity. Our physics system should be a none, and our collidable should be self dot collidable. That's like a fairly a fairly lightweight clone here. So if I do that, back to our world. Interesting. Now you're the one who's complaining about us. This. Uh, I want to run this in the terminal and see what the actual errors are. Sometimes it gives like better error messages in this version, as opposed to just relying upon VS Code's like you know uh, interface. But no, that's pretty much the same. Okay, so it's sounding here on in. Line 70 here, right here. Expected to struct entity entity found a double reference, a double mutable reference to entity. That's because we're taking these entities. So here's these entities. We're getting all the entities. Now I am iterating through this, but I shouldn't be updating these entities. I should not be updating these entities. So therefore I get now a vec of Double mute, and you're not. Okay, you you are. Um, if I just try double dereferencing this, okay. Now you're saying cannot be dereferenced. I guess you're saying cannot be dereferenced because you're saying this entity is here at this point. So when we push in, can I double dereference you? I still, I'm, I don't want to, oh, 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 okay, let's, instead, let's clone here, clone a vector of all these entities, and then, and then we can push into here, we don't have to clone here, if, if the entity is collidable, just push in um, the entity.
Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not aware that Vec has a clone of this. I do wonder, though, I, I think that this logic, we probably should move this into the, the grid. So if we head back to the grid. I bet that what we want to do here is create ourselves a, a function to do this. So this is going to be um, get cloned. Get all clones. All right, so what is that going to look like? Probably very similar to what we had before, uh, except now it's going to be on this function. So if we create uh, our grid, and let's say we create these three entities here, and we insert these three entities. Then I want to get a clone of all three, and we should be able to just check to see if if they are in fact clones. So uh, this is going to be that other entities. I mean, do we also want to say like get collidable clones? That could be interesting. Um, let's just try get all cloned for right now. Um, okay, so let other entities equals we're going to do a grid dot get all cloned we're not going to pass anything in so you're going to start yelling this because we don't have a get all cloned let's go fix that Okay, so we have uh, self here, and we know we're going to have to return a, a vec of entity, and that that's it. So I'm just going to turn an empty vector for right now, just to make the compiler happy. Then we should be able to do a, a few asserts here. Now let's say, let's say I don't do more than one. I'll make the testing a little bit happier. And I can give one of these a, like a physics system or a draw system. So like set, set a physics system, box new. Oh, it, yeah, box new. Um, do a player. system default I think I think that works okay so now we have an entity that's new we're gonna get other entities and then we can now assert equal and like test all these like test everything we need to out of here so we're gonna say um, other entities position zero which is gonna be that first entity dot um, okay so collidable in this case should be false um, it's location uh, we didn't override that so that should be zero and zero so this should be Location that x should be zero to zero. Um, and then I think the most important one is assert 
think I just want to do an assert like this. And then we're going to do a matches. But the other entities of position zero dot physics system. We need you to be public so I can do this test. Uh, physics system is going to be a none. All right. We have an error. This is in our world um, update. Let's actually... We're, we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it a different way. And then, then when we add you in, you'll be fine. So let's... that I know what we can do uh bring you back we're we're sort of working on it we're going to do our self dot grid dot get all entities get all cloned um that gives us cloned effect entities and we can pass that in there Cannot borrow self that grid is immutable because it's also borrowed as mutable. Oh, because we okay, so get all entities mute. I wonder if I can do this just above here. Yeah, I can. All right, and then you cannot move out of collidable entities. Oh, because we're in a for each. Um, I wonder. I want. Oh, okay. I wonder if we need to like implement clone. Or specifically, we're going to. We want to implement copy for collidable entities. So we're gonna come into here and we're gonna implement copy. But notice, I don't have to put in clone here, I don't think, because we have a clone, oh, sorry, a copy here, let's see. Oh, the trait copy cannot be implemented for that. Can I implement the copy myself? No, I cannot. Okay. Can I do something like... No, I can't. Okay. Uh, that was a long shot. Um, we'll just have to manually clone this at this point in time. So we'll just clone you. What did I do wrong? Our other here, entity that updates. Expected a comma. Okay. Update takes in these two things gravity and playable others. So here's gravity, playable others. Others. Update does not take in these other things. This should be a semicolon here. But I'm getting an expected. Okay, so. I need to. Oh, what is it called? There's like a rainbow, um, there's like a bracket colorizer. I think this one is, oh, it's installed. 
Oh, you're not going to show it to me. Okay, so one open, one closed. That's in closed in here. I'm missing one more. Like that. There we go. All right, no errors in here. That means all of our errors in the grid here. So what are you yelling at me about? Oh, a strict comparison. Let's uh, let's fix that. It doesn't say that there is an error. Okay, so our test panicked because the length was zero of this vector that we got back. Uh, this other um, entities from the get all clones, which isn't all that surprised because get all clones is just an empty vector. But the code is working. That means we just need to make this test pass now. So we need to uh, loop through everything to, to get this. So let's just do this is let mutes entities equals an empty vector. Um, we need to do very similar to this. Uh, we need to for each down all of the rows. So um, I mean, it's actually very similar to what we have here. So self dot uh, cells. Uh, this can just be an iter. Okay, so for each. And this can be a this is gonna be a row. Alright, so what are we gonna do with our row? We have to for each through each of these rows. So we're gonna say row dot iter dot for each. Um, and then we're gonna get a cell. And then for each of these cells, uh, we want to get all clones. Well, we don't have a get all clones. Let's actually fix that. So we're going to just return full entity here because we're taking ownership of it because we're cloning it. So um this should be pretty simple we should just be able to return uh self dot entities dot clone like that and the vector should be able to handle that so then what i want to do is i want to push into entities dot push um it's going to be cell dot get all clones then at the end here Um, okay, we know we're going to return these entities. Let's just do that so it stops yelling at us. Uh, I want to flat map this because our entities right now is a vec, a vec of entities, which is not, not exactly right. So we want to convert this into an iterator. So we take ownership of the iterator, flatten and then collect it into a vector again. And there we go, no errors. If I run this test, it passes. Okay. Does that mean this will just work now? Let's try it. What have I, what have I forgotten? That took a little bit longer to sort of set up and run. And it's hard to tell if we like clip through it. Good morning, Utsby. Oh, okay. If you want to get rid of the startup delay, you may want to adjust the code where you create a default grid with 25 million cells in it. Uh, 
Um, would I not want to create the grid? I, I could try not. Ooh, we could try. So we're trying not drawing the grid, but it might be easier. Hold on. Let's go to world here. If I don't draw the grid and we don't even create the grid, that would be in drawables here. So if I don't do that, uh, look at your default code for world. That is true. We're creating a pretty big grid here. That's a pretty big world. Oh, so it's probably not our mesh. It's this. It's the grid. Because if I run this, it's probably going to be still the same delay. Yeah. So that does take that does take a while to create. Which is a little bit too bad. Just saying default unit width and height to 500 or something. Yeah, we can do that. Um... Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. Because we're updating the grid when we create that. I wasn't thinking about the default. I was thinking about the, the full version. Um, I think the other thing is it is creating one with 5,000. Uh, so it's creating two of them with 5,000, essentially. But at least now it's only doing it once, as opposed to twice. Um, now, we need to get our collision detection working with that. With our player physics system, I'm I'm really curious, is, is there any collidables here? So I'm going to run a debug um, on a reference to... Collidables. Oh, just changed the default unit width and height to 500 or something. Wait, did I did I do the wrong one? No, this was like 5,000 and then one. So this should be a 10 by 10 grid now instead of a. We can just do this as like 10 and 10. So it's just like one by one. But I think it still doesn't. It's a little bit faster. Ooh, look at that as it's trying to draw all these out. Yeah, when we change the width and height, they'll divide by one again. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So I probably want to you actually use 50. So why have it so small to start? I don't know. I think I think I just put that in there as like testing stuff and then I forgot to change it. So we have our other entity affected by gravity false, affected by gravity true. OK, so here's our platform. We have two entities in it, the player, and that's this one right here. And then we have the the platform. And this is affected by gravity true. Now, we should probably rename this. This isn't collidables anymore. This is now just others. We're going to loop through the others. And... The first thing we care about is um, we need an early exit if we're not. Yeah, I need to 
change it to be a proper builder pattern and not and not create the grid at all until you call builder finalize or whatever yeah that's that's probably the best thing to do um i sort of like have a halfway builder pattern that's just doing a little bit too much and it was fine until then but i need to like rebuild the grid when i change levels anyways so mm, it probably like have that as something that's not terrible I think I have an idea of how to do that. Uh, let me see if I can get this working first and then we can go take a look at that. Okay, so um, we want to first check to see if the other is... And so we know this is gonna work here. Uh, so we really want to check to see if other... If other um, dots collidable. So really, if if not other collidable, so if we're not collidable, then I kind of would just want an early return out of here. And I don't really care. And so it's our, our guard clause to get out of this, this loop early. Then I want to do this. Now that being said, are you are you gonna work? No. So is my collision detection algorithm incorrect? Pro probably. Um, all right, so we want our okay, so location at x plus half our width. So that's the right hand side of us is greater than other location of x minus the other half width. Okay, so that's so our right hand side is to the right of their left side, and our left side is to the left of their right side. Um, and if our location dot y plus the half the height says so the bottom half of us is greater than their the top of them then stop our velocity And reset, reset our location. Now that being said, our velocity okay. So we have self dot velocity dot zero is. So I wonder if we're gonna want to like set ourselves to be standing or something like that. And then that way we don't even do this calculation where we add on here. Cause that might be that might be our, our problem right here. If we if we test this out really quickly, if we something if we do something like um is standing. Is a boolean, and so default. Uh, this would be false to begin with. Now, if our velocity the y is Okay, so we do so if the velocity is incremented based upon acceleration. Yeah, 
if self dot velocity dot y is greater than 10. Okay, so this is our, just our, our limiter, so we can't go past that. I would think that this should work, but I'm, I'm guessing that we're not. Hmm. It, okay, so this is probably not. We don't. Our logic is elsewhere. Our, our problem is elsewhere. Our problem is down here. This this math is clearly incorrect. If I run a debug, um, and we're just like colliding, my guess is that we never hit that. Yeah. Okay. So that's our that's our problem. Now our debug up here was running quite often. So this is this logic is our problem. Is is not not correct. Um so let's let's redo this. We want let's um if we want to check to see if we're fully inside um, if we check the the X's first, so the widths to see if our um, we want to be to the right of the left hand side and to the left of the right hand side. Um, but we want to check to see if our right hand side. And I could I could even do like build build this up elsewhere out here, so I can say um, that um, our right x equals excuse me location dot x plus location dot uh, width divided by two point zero. Okay, so if our right x, that has to be um, greater than their left x. So that other left x equals location other dot location dot x minus other dot location dot w divided by two point zero. Okay, so this has to be greater than other left x and um our so our right x our um our left x Okay, um, and then other right x. Okay, so the other right x. Um, all right, so then our left x has to be less than the other right x. So if I if I run this, we should just be colliding instantaneously and not and not move at all. Um, let's not let's not do that yet. Uh, our left axis W. Okay, so that's not hitting. So it's not showing that we're within the bands here. So that's a that's a problem. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so... I could do just our center. I kind of want to... Um, to double check that where I think our center is, is where our center is. So let's go into our platform draw system here. Um, we have that that draw here that's below this. Um, I'm gonna create another just mesh really quickly here so that uh, I guess it's gonna be like a circle. Builder, new, um, do a circle. Um, okay, so the point of where we want this to be. Um, Arctic Space Fox, hello! What kind of point are you? You're a mint point. So... You're just like this. Uh, we're gonna go location dot x, location dot y. Um, radius. Let's do like five point zero. Um, tolerance zero point one, and color. We're gonna make you white. Build you, and then we're gonna draw you. Wait a second. Draw, what are you yelling to be about? Okay, so graphics draw. So context, the drawable, and the params. So context, the drawable, and the params. I'm ending this, right? Yeah. Oh, question mark. There you go. We should now figure out exactly where our circle is. Wait a second. Oh, we did this to the platform draw system. I need to do this to the player draw system. What? How, how did I completely... I must have accidentally done copy again, so I lost that. So we're gonna do uh, let circle builder do circle Okay, we should now have the circle on the player, which is that circle. Oh man, okay, what did I miss? Uh, draw mode. Kill. So I see th I see a white circle in there. We need to make this not 1.0. Let's make this like 3.0. That'll be a little bit easier to see. So 
I actually see this location is right here. So we, we know that it's right in the center of the, the circle. Okay, so in our platform and our player physics system, if we know where our center is, which is actually right in the center of our, our player, um, and we know that we're running this update because we're updating our location. We're not hitting colliding. So this is clearly wrong. Um, so the we want the right hand. Okay, let's start from like, if we're just moving straight into it from the left, the our right hand side so our right should be greater than the other left. Have I just done this this math of like figuring out what our, our left and our right is? Um, or can we, is like this, this isn't correct. Like maybe, um, are we getting no, no loops through? No, we're okay. So that's happening. Like we're getting this. Now, if we take a look at um, okay, so if we debug the the other entity stacking, hello. If we take a look at this, okay, so it's an entity. We see it's 50 by 650. It's it's not moving, and it's flightable is true. Okay, so um, long stream day. I do have work today. I, I have worked all week this week. I, um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I don't have I don't have work, but I'll probably stream Christmas Eve. I probably will not stream Christmas Day. Um, ah, would you look at that? Yeah, good point out, uh, Utsby. Um, change music station this minute, uh, to lo-fi. Ooh, okay, we can do that. There you go. Lo-fi on. Yeah, look at that. We have no width and no height. So when we're creating our platform, this is the fun part about uh, the fun part about separating the graphics from like the actual thing. Uh, when I create the platform, we set the draw system, we set collidable. Uh, what we failed to do was set um, size. Wait, how do we set the size? Does player not have a width either? Wait a second. How how are you working? Okay, entity. Okay, so we have our location, which is a rectangle. Our location of that is set. We set you to be zero. Okay, this is where it becomes zero, zero, zero. Um, oh, the only reason I did that is that I can have like the X, Y and width and height all together inside of like one, one data structure so I can pass it around. That's the only reason. Um, also it includes, oh yeah, I, I completely forgot. Also, uh, the entire point of a rectangle is it, it includes a collision texture inside of it. 
So I, all this code I'm writing is completely useless. That being said, it is correct that we don't seem to have any way to set the width and the height. Okay. We need to set the width. We need to set the height. And then we need to like have them collide together. So the collision part is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to have, let's see, in our player physics system, we don't need to do any of this stuff. Oh, we probably want to just do if, um, if our location dot is it contains? No. What, what, which one is it? Overlaps. Okay, so if it overlaps, uh, other dot location, then I want to kill our, our velocity. So self dot velocity uh, times equals zero dot zero, and then uh, set our location back up to the top. So I'm gonna do location dot y is equal to other location y minus other dot um, other dot location dot um, height divided by two point zero minus location dot height divided by two point zero. What? You can't be dereferenced? Hold on. Expected. Can I just clone you? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, never mind. It was expect. I was reading it backwards. I need to give it a reference. I don't need to get the actual thing, just a reference to the thing. I was going completely backwards for that. Um, okay, so that's going to be the code for this. Now, it's not going to work because I need to give it a width and a height, which I can't do right now. Um, now, we can sort of kind of fake it by going to our entity and for a default, setting the width to like five and the height to five. Um, so then they should they should collide together uh, with these. And I have to do that really quickly because I'm not gonna be able to stay too long, but we should be able to collide with that now. Although it might collide inside of the box because the box's height is significantly bigger. However, that did work. We, we got our collision. So what I need to do is set up an ability to uh, actually tell us, tell this how, how tall this is, which means we need to update the, the builder system. We need to do that anyways. So it'll be the perfect time to do that. However, I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because it is 8.35. I don't have much time before my workday starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shutting us down. Let's see, close all of that up and let's go push these up. So we did a lot today. Um, we're basically, we created a platform um, and made it collidable. Still need to give entities a width and height while doing that. Make the builder pattern a real builder pattern.
A lie double. I guess that's, is that not a real word? Well, it doesn't think it's a real word. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. Probably isn't. I would trust the operating system that knows that it's probably not, not correct. All right. Well, regardless, I'm going to send it up anyways, and we're going to push that. All this code is available at Bang Repo in case you want to take a look at that and sort of follow along. Um, tomorrow morning, the plan is to actually update our builder pattern um, to be a real builder pattern instead of what craziness that I have, which is almost a builder pattern, but not really. And then that way, that way we can set the width and height of our entities and then they're going to be able to collide with each other properly. Um, and then that will that will be that. Now, drawing our our platforms out, I'm not going to want to actually actually just draw each one individually. I want to like combine them together into a single draw. So that's going to be interesting to do. Probably for like our, our platform draw system needs to have like an update section that's going to deal with that. Hello, Mr. Halsey. We're just finishing up here. How are you? Are you going to stream today? If you're going to, if you're live, I can, I can raid you. Um, talking about who's live. Who do I have on my list? We have I'm Hardliner and oh Peyton rules. Oh Peyton, we haven't raided Peyton in a long time. Not right now. Um oh you're doing well. Awesome. Did you did you get all of your like housework stuff fixed up? Also, um for every on YouTube watching this, I'm gonna put a marker in so you don't have to watch the rest of the uh the sort of like the spin down. So anyways, thank you for watching.